On a previous uh, video, we made a small molding of strips of oak, just a small round inset from the corners. And I thought it'd be interesting for you to see what I'm going to do with this molding. This molding is, is for the edge of a table. Here's the table. It's an oak veneer table. And it came from the factory with a veneered edge. Now, it's not a very expensive table, but it's, it's a durable, it's, it's a serviceable table. It's a table you can have the grandchildren at, and if they bump on it and beat on it and spill things on it, you don't care. Now, the top of the table has been stripped of its old finish and refinished. It's been stained and varnished, a couple of coats. But there's a problem with the table. You see, this is what our molding is for. This rounded edge that came from the factory is just veneer. It's peeling away. It's ugly. You can't do anything with it. That's why we made these little moldings. The moldings uh, that we made in the shop have been stained and varnished as well. And they're made to fit here to give a different edge to the table. The problem is, we've got to get rid of this old rounded edge. Now this is not an old table, but it's worth saving because it's just so useful, serviceable. But we've got to get rid of that edge. I'm not going to use my good saws to cut this material. I'm not going to take my good planes and plane that material. It would just, well, it would just be a sacrilege. What we're going to do is, is use appropriate tools. And this will show you that I'm not a hand tool nut, just a nut. So what I've done is, the easiest way for me to cut this off is simply to use a circular saw. The circular saw is tough to guide on a big cut. So I've simply taken a piece of plywood, wide enough to cross the table, I've measured back from the edge on both ends the distance I need so that my saw will just cut that rounded edge off. And then I've used my trusty hand screws to clamp that plywood down so it doesn't move. move my coffee cup. We don't want to lose that. Move everything back out of the way. And we're going to cut this edge off with this circular saw. Now remember, whenever you're using a circular saw, that's a dangerous tool. Be sure you know what you're doing and be very careful with it. Um, and take appropriate safety as I mentioned before, this table has been stripped and re-varnished, but it still needs another coat or two of varnish. Nonetheless, I don't want to scratch up that tabletop too much. It just adds to the work of, of finishing it. So I've simply taken some duct tape, or some masking tape rather, and taped on the bottom of my circular saw. The saw will ride on the tape. It will create less damage to the top of that table. So we're just going to stand back and keep the saw off the edge.
there it's off. Now you noticed I pushed the saw across this table very slowly. The reason being I want it to reduce the amount of chipping on the cross grain of the veneer. There's a couple of little spots but those will be easy to deal with. Now what I have to do is actually go all around the table removing that little round strip. That's all the problem. Then we'll put our molding strips in place, fit them, glue them in the way they ought to be. Now just a little trick for setting up the, uh, the straight edge to run the saw against. You have to measure the base of the saw to know how far from the edge of the saw base, and I'll show you what I mean, how far from the edge of the saw base to the blade. You need that number. You can take that number and then do some tricky measuring. That's harder. The easier way is to set up a square, just a sliding combination square. Set it up for the width you need to where the cut's got to be, plus the thickness of what has to come off. Then you can simply put it in place. And it is exactly where it's supposed to be. So now that everything is clamped in place, we'll just saw this edge off, a mirror image of what we did on the end. Now I still have two edges to cut on this table, but I want to just show you how the moldings sort of go together and, and the basic procedure of fitting them. Now you can be tricky and, and do it all and, and measure them exactly and cut them just exactly. If you can do it that way, do it that way. I'm far more comfortable just fitting them rather than measuring them. Now the moldings will fit on these flat surfaces like so. You'll notice the moldings are a bit long. When you make them, make them a bit long. Now just kind of fit it to the corner. I've mitered one corner of the molding at a 45 degree angle. So, just kind of fit it in place. Now, if you have a friend to help you fit these moldings, that, that really works out well. But if you're like me, you'll often be working alone. And one way to fit something like this is to use a great helper. That masking tape again. You can just fit it in place. Uh, I've taken some extra pieces of masking tape and just stuck them to the tabletop along the sides. And here's the molding that will fit along the side. Just bring them together. Tape them in place. great joy of the tape is that it actually holds it from sliding around. We know that corner fits. It'll have to be cleaned up a little after and re-sand it just to take that sharp corner off a bit, but it'll work out just fine. Now, if I'd already squared up the other sides, what I would do next is take another piece of molding, 
and I would use it to gauge the length I need on these two pieces. Here's another piece for the end. I could hold it against this edge, mark it exactly. I would know exactly where the cut's got to be. Same thing here. Hold the long piece to the edge. It could be marked exactly. Cut your miters carefully. They fit together. You go all around the table. You don't measure anything. Because if you're going to make a mistake in woodworking, nine times out of ten, the mistake will be in measuring. So that's as simple as it is. So that's, that's all we're going to do today, but I want to mention one more thing about the woodworker's great helper, masking tape. You see, we've used it just to hold that molding in place. Well, when we're finished and all these moldings are fitted, the corners all work, we're going to coat the edge, edges of the table with a thin coating of glue. Also, a thin coating of glue on the back of the molding. Now, glue is going to hold those moldings in place. If you've got $1,000 worth of clamps, you could have clamps going in all directions. And, and believe me, you'll go nuts trying to get them all tight at once. But once the glue is on, you can simply push the moldings in place, fit the corners just like we did, and then use masking tape. The masking tape is slightly elastic. You can just stretch it a little bit, move the molding up or down, pull it tight, hold it down, and use lots of it. It'll clamp that molding in place. It'll go nowhere. When the glue is dry, take it off. Everything will just be wonderful. So, enjoy your little project. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this one. See you next time.